Welcome to Predator vs. Prey, a show that looks at the ongoing battle for survival between nature's best hunters and the prey so desperate to avoid them. to episode 4 of Predator vs Prey. I'm the host Tim Williams and I'm here to bring you the final episode of the series. We're going to look at another Predator and another Prey, but first we have a special guest and once again it is one that cannot fit into one of the categories, but despite this it has some magnificent features that prevent it being hunted and also can make it potentially very deadly. Now these are the magnificent white rhinos. Now you may be wondering why they are called white rhinos when they are in fact grey. And this is because the name white is actually a corruption of the original name of an Afrikaans word which actually meant wide and that's referring to the shape of their lips. And the best way to tell a white rhino and a black rhino apart is because white rhinos have wide broad lips whereas black rhinos tend to be a bit more pointed. Rhinos are the second largest land mammal behind elephants and they can weigh up to four tons in weight. They tend to live in groups or small herds and they can often live in groups of up to 12 individuals. Now probably the most famous feature of a rhino is its large horn on the top of its head. Now despite its sheer size this horn is actually the rhino's best form of defence. The males use their horns to fend off attackers, and the females use their horns to protect their young. And because of this excellent defence mechanism, the rhino has no natural hunters in the wild. However, its horn is also its downfall. The horn is made of a substance which is similar to what makes up our fingernails. And this substance is traditionally used in many old-fashioned medicines. Because of this, it's led to the rhino being hunted and killed for its horn. This is actually illegal, but it has led to there only being thought to be 11,000 rhinos left in the wild. Now, that was the white rhino. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it up close and seeing how huge and magnificent the animal is. We're now going to go back to our usual rankings. We're going to look at our predator now. This week, our predator is the saltwater crocodile. Many people class it as the most deadly animal and the most likely to kill a human. We're going to look at how they hunt in the wild and what makes them so good at it. The saltwater crocodile is the world's largest crocodile and it's got an average size of about 5 meters in length and a weight of 500 kilograms. But some have been measured as large as 7 meters and up to a ton in weight. They are opportunistic killing machines with many features designed to help them catch and kill their prey. Crocs aren't fussy eaters and will catch virtually any mammal that strays too close to the water's edge. They'll also eat fish and crustaceans. Now the first of the crocodile's features that help it be such a great hunter is its very strong tail. Not only does this help it swim, but it also means that when it's lying at the edge, as you sort of see it now, it can propel itself with immense speed towards the prey and catch it by surprise. The crocodile then uses its extremely strong jaws to latch onto the prey and drag it underwater. This is done to drown its prey and the crocodile is able to do it with its mouth open because it's got this valve that means that it doesn't end up breathing in or swallowing any water. Now if just dragging it under isn't enough to kill the prey, they also have a technique called the death roll. And what they do, whilst they're grabbing their prey, they'll basically twist round and round and round, basically like a barrel roll, and this will break many bones in their prey's body. If this happens to break the neck bone, it will probably result in death. Now despite the fact that crocodiles have been known to kill and eat people, 
there's actually more people killed each year by bee sting. So it's very unlucky if you do get caught by one of these. And it's often injured or ill crocs or old crocs that end up resorting to catching people. Now because of these incredible features, the lightning speed off the mark, the strength of the jaw and the ability to kill and drag it underwater, this crocodile is going to get a 9.5 on my predator rating. It's because it's got no natural predators and can kill practically anything. Now that was a saltwater crocodile, as you can see it is an incredible hunter, incredibly powerful and deceptively quick. The last animal we're going to look at is the prey. Um, this week we're going to look at a porcupine. Porcupines have many features and adaptions that make them pretty good at actually surviving. Now these are porcupines and as you can probably tell already their most obvious way of defence is those quills on their back. When the porcupine is threatened those quills will stand on end and it will face them towards the predator. There's often bacteria growing on those quills and if a predator gets jabbed by one of them it can actually cause infection and even lead to death. So it's actually a pretty effective way of defence. However, some predators such as coyotes and cougars can actually hunt porcupines without getting hurt by rolling them onto their backs and attacking their weak underside. So despite their potential deadly defence mechanism, they're still weak when they've got a smart predator attacking them. And because of this, they're only going to score 7 on my prey rating. Alright, that was the porcupine. Those rankings will be shown at the final credits to see which was our top predator and our top prey. Now, unfortunately, that is the last episode of Predator vs. Prey. I hope you've all enjoyed watching the series. I've enjoyed presenting it and producing it. Thank you very much for watching all these series. As usual, I've been your host and it's been a pleasure.